Pop quiz. What is something everyone is familiar with, but no one has good explanation for? Put your answers in the comments below because I need video suggestions for the future. Uh, but today the answer is pretty simple. Humor. Uh, what makes a joke funny? Or more pertinently to my area of skill, what makes a story funny and how do you write a funny story? Sure, it's one thing to live life and pluck out random memories and actually remember them, repeat them to people, and to share that moment. Uh, and that's, in a lot of ways, what stand-up comedians do. That's how they build their their routine. The order of the jokes and all that is something they have to figure out. You don't you when you show up to a comedy club, you just see the final product, or maybe you're seeing them work on it and they're trying to get to a final product. But you don't see how much they are rearranging the collection of jokes and stories and which ones they're including, which ones they're not, because they have to work on that bit a lot in order to get it to actually work well. Uh, and unfortunately, if you try and look into how to do it, a lot of times you just kind of get told, ease them in or something like that. Uh, because the, the actual like science of how do you set up a comedy routine is more about just... What can you do? Like, what, what's what's your delivery of the jokes? Figure it out yourself. Uh, just brute force your way to doing it. Uh, because dude, that's that's the nature of humor. Humor is something that everyone knows how to do. Everyone can crack a joke. Uh, especially when the timing is right and you've got that wit, you've got that moment of inspiration. Uh, and with you, so you're just supposed to figure it out, right? Well, that doesn't really work well, especially when you have, when you're trying to write a book and give it to people and say, yes, I will. I think this book will make you laugh. Now, funnily enough, the nature of comedy and humor is a seriously studied field of human psychology and of philosophy. I'm pretty sure that everyone on the internet has heard the basic biological explanation that we evolved a sense of humor to release the tension and communicate to that to one another. You know the story. Caveman hears rustling bush in the night, thinks it's a tiger come to eat him, but it's just the wind. When the tension releases, he laughs. When he laughs, everyone else laughs. Incidentally, that is why there is canned laughter in sitcoms. That's why they put in the laugh track and the live studio audience, everyone. It is to trick you into thinking something is funny even if it's not. If you don't believe me, try going on YouTube and pulling up something like The Big Bang Theory with the laugh track muted. You'll notice it's not funny. It was never funny. None of the jokes are funny. The people involved are not funny. They're just horrible to each other. Bad writing. Now, not to get off topic here, uh, comedy in books is really great, if it's done well. It just can get hard to explain what makes something funny, because there's a couple different kinds of humor. Slapstick, for instance. A lot of, it, a lot of humor can be in the delivery. Uh, I think we've all seen something like Airplane, which was originally a serious drama, and uh, they just did a different delivery of the same lines and made it hilarious. Uh... But, for example, if you only have the written word, you need to be very careful with timing because you can't actually control how fast the reader is reading. Or if they get pulled away or if they're zoned out on an audiobook or they just weren't paying attention or something. With a live performance or in film or whatever, you have this huge advantage because uh, you can control the timing of events correctly. An author can do a setup and a punchline and time it well, but from all the books I've ever read, the setup and the punchline are typically in the same paragraph. That's so the reader doesn't have a chance to forget. Now, some of you are probably rolling your eyes right now, balking with examples, but I'm willing to bet that whatever example you just thought of is actually the secret sauce of a good comedy book. Reusing the same punchline in bigger and funnier ways later in the book. Uh, in my opinion, that's the beauty of Terry Pratchett's writing. That's disc world. Uh, he'll often set up one joke with an immediate punchline. But then like a chapter or so later, he tells the joke again, but funnier. And you remember the setup because the first punchline glued it into your brain. And then you think that's that, and he lets it sit and sit until at the very end of the book, and then it gets you again. Now, if you expand that formula across an entire series, and you tie the setup of the joke to the characters themselves, which, by the way, that's like the first useful advice you'll get on writing a funny story. If you want to write a funny story, write about funny characters. Sounds obvious, but a lot of people fail to do that. See most Hollywood comedy movies. Not funny people. 
So, anyways, if you tie the setup uh, to the characters, uh, then you can drop a punchline whenever you want. A uh, humor novel still ten still wants to have a plot and tension and character relations and all those other standard features, which means there will be high points and low points, and the skill of the writing is fitting in as many jokes and punchlines as possible without compromising the story itself. Uh, now, this month for the book club, a uh, link in the description, of course, you're all welcome to join. It's free. Uh, we're reading Catch-22, uh, which everyone agrees is a funny book, but it reads like one skit after the next, and you almost can't put together a plot because everyone in the book is nuts. Uh, to write a story like that and have it actually be satisfying is pretty difficult. It's not something I really recommend. It, like, if you're at the point of taking advice from me, you probably aren't at a level to do that. No offense. Uh, it's simply easier to keep the direction of the story clear and steadily progressing. So for all that, I hope you understand when I say I love Konosuba. Uh, it's funny as hell and it does way more right than you would ever expect for a series that is a bunch of silly isekai antics about obnoxious women being stupid. Uh, what precisely got me thinking I should make this video today? Because as you can see here, I just read the 10th volume. Uh, and I can't really start a review series at volume 10. Like, that's crazy. Uh, but what I was thinking about was in this one, they once again had the lie-detecting bell. I love this little police gadget thing they have, which acts like Pinocchio's nose and dings whenever someone tells a lie. It's a super common magic and fantasy, and it's bothered me for almost a decade at this point because I once tried to write a Dungeons & Dragons adventure around a murder mystery. I had to try to figure out how Zone of Truth didn't just completely trivialize the entire plot. Uh, it pissed me off that I found yet another spell that invalidated entire problems. Uh, side note, I also hate magic translation spells for similar reasons. So, back to Konosubo. Uh, the world is presented as relying on these lie-detecting bells for their police investigations because the magic basically works. So you've got serious and often adversarial government officials with this magic bell at their disposal, and then they're pitted against the gaggle of idiots. And the shit that simply spews out of their mouths as they're having petty arguments in the middle of an investigation, but also interfering with the magic bell and talking over one another and completely ruining the entire premise of the official and serious police is just some of the funniest shit. Maybe you can see why that's funny, because that's one of the big theories on humor, how humor works. Not just incongruity, but the reversal of status. The high brought low is what gets the laugh. Uh, to make a crude example, a penniless beggar slipping out of banana peel isn't funny. But a king slipping out of banana peel in front of a penniless beggar kind of is. In the cast of Konosuba, that's why the girls are all incredibly powerful adventurers. Aqua is a literal goddess of healing who's most known for party tricks because she's an idiot. Megaman is the most powerful wizard in the world at this point, but needs a piggyback ride after she casts one spell for the day. Darkness is an indestructible tank who can't hit anything she swings at. If they were just actually losers, no one would find this series funny. Uh, so I'm going to wrap up the video here because I think I've rambled enough, and I've already made my book recommendations. If you want to give my funny book a try, that would be Infinite Money Glitch, and I'll get a link to that in the description too. Next time I talk about the problem of humor, I'll touch on the innate narrative structure of a joke. Jokes have to be stories. They're setup, then punchline. That's why the standard meme template is to have top text, bottom text. The internet has proven you can set up and tell a joke very fast, but those kinds of memes actually rely on very deep forms of referential communication. They're often saying more than they appear to be. Uh, until then, please, smash the like button, tell your friends, and if you haven't already, subscribe for more. Till then. Cheers.